Hello my friends and welcome, let's speak about the Russian surveillance ship Ivan Hurs that was targeted by the drone boats yesterday and I showed you the video of the attack of those boats. Yes, Russia managed to destroy at least one of the drones, but the other one went into the aft part of the ship. But today they claim that the Ivan Hurs ship went into the Sebastopol Bay. And here they show even the video. It's hard to say whether this video is old or new. They claim that it's the new video filmed today. And they continue to publish many other videos stating that this is the ship and it is intact. And literally you may see that indeed it is intact, there is no any signs of the drone attack. And they claim that this video also was filmed today. As you can see, probably there are no any signs of the drone attack on the aft part of the ship, which is strange. And the ship actually has the name Ivan Hurs. And on that video, there is no such a name on that ship, but Russia has just one kind of that surveillance ship in their marine fleet. So I think that it is Ivan Hurs. But there is one more video published by the Ukrainian resources. So as you can see, the quality is not that great, but the ship was attacked actually from behind. So they managed to destroy some sort of the drone and they were hit by one of the drones and there was the fire. Plus, the Russian towing ship was spotted exactly at the area where Ivan Hurs was damaged. The towing ship was very slow, 0.8 knots. This low speed for towing means that the ship behind is damaged. Unfortunately, Ivan Hurs switched off the transponder, so we don't see it. And this information also was spread by the Russian channels, as well as the confirmation of Ivan Hurs entering the Sebastopol Bay. But I'm not sure if those footages are up to date, we don't have the confirmation of that. By the way, if you have any proofs or resources that may confirm the information whether the ship is okay or whether it was significantly damaged, please share the link on my Telegram channel. As always, my Telegram channel is available in the video description just below so join me over there and there we have the special chat for my followers and please share your information or maybe opinion over there and russians also claim that this picture was taken today but based on the yesterday's video then we all saw how the drone hit the aft part of the ship and the signal was lost so clearly it was the explosion over there so i think that those pictures are old. Speaking about the sea topic, Ukraine obtained the light armored boat with artillery gun. The name of it is Bucha. Just to remind you, we have just a few ships in Ukrainian marine fleet. And the biggest one, Hetman Saigaidachny, was drowned by Ukrainian forces at the beginning of this war. It was done not to let it into the Russian Navy fleet because they might have captured it. And who was present today on the transfer of the boat is Zaluzhny the general commander himself. So I guess he feels quite well. Some worrying news started to appear in the media resources, first of all in the Russian media resources, about the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. So Russians stated that Ukraine is preparing for some sort of the sabotage attack on nuclear power plant. Ukrainian side says that Russia is preparing the sabotage attack on it. They want to cause the nuclear disaster in the region and that is how they might stop the war action actions for a certain time. Because of the rescue operations in the area and Zaporizhia nuclear power plant is very close to the possible Ukrainian counteroffensive assault point. It is just getting insane. Russia started to play with millions of people's lives. The last year they spoke about the dirty bomb nuclear one that Ukraine may use and now they speak about the nuclear power plant. It is a very real threat for now because they are controlling that nuclear power plant and they put lots of the armored vehicles inside including the battle vehicles. Plus they put the machine guns and artillery systems and air defense systems just on the top of those buildings. 
Some of the United States officials, like Deputy of the State Secretary Nuland, she says that the counteroffensive of the Ukrainian army was prepared for almost half a year. She said that it took five months of the planning together with the Western advisors, also from the United States. And again, we expect the counterattack to start very, very soon. It's actually the second stage of the counterattack, as I said to you in my previous video. Today, there were lots of the explosions on the Russian-controlled territory, including Tokmak, Melitopol and Mariupol. Ukrainian army uses the long-range missiles to target the Russian supply lines. So yesterday it was the attack on Berdansk port, where Russia put the air defense systems as 300s. They were targeted just after offloading from the ships, and many of the S-300 systems and rockets were destroyed. And today there were new explosions. I think this is the Azov-style factory, where Russia also put their forces, and there was big explosion. Netherlands likely to send the F-16s to Ukraine after pilot training. Indeed, it will happen, no doubts about it. It's interesting, but there was the Shahid drone attack on the Russian territory. Indeed, this is the Shahid drone that was taken from the sea. And there were several explosions in that area. It's very strange, probably Russia messed up with coordinates, or maybe it's some sort of the provocation or something. And one more boom was reported in Maisky village near to Belgorod. There is the Russian military base actually, and there are lots of the people walking around, lots of the services, fire brigades. I think this is actually the residential area, could be, but there are no any signs of the fire. The last night Russia targeted the hospital in Dnipro city. There are some of the casualties, many people were wounded. This is not the military hospital or something, this is the standard civilian one. The Russian missile unfortunately wasn't intercepted and just went into the target. They put those coordinates into the rocket before, so clearly they aim towards the hospitals. According to the United Nations conventions, none of the hospitals should be targeted, and it doesn't matter whether those hospitals are civilian or military. And Russians just do not care. They are truly barbarians. And with each strike, they just rise the hatred more and more towards themselves. Ukraine continued to target the Russian surveillance towers. They put those towers at the Russian border on the Russian-controlled territory and also start to build them on the occupied territory. I'm not sure where it happened, but the surveillance equipment was totally demolished for Russians. And this is the other tower. As you can see, uh, we used the FPV drones, not we, but Ukrainian forces, right? And the other drone just to confirm that the tower was lost. The huge American ferry Defender was spotted in the Baltic Sea. It carries lots of the armored vehicles and probably tanks that could be delivered to Ukrainian army. If it is now in the Baltic Sea, the vehicles will appear in Ukraine in around two weeks. Prigozhin is probably getting ready to go for politics, at least there are lots of the stickers like that spotted around the Russian cities. Yevgeny Prigozhin, the strong leader, not the bunker coward. The next year is the election year for the Russian Federation and probably Prigozhin will go for presidency, who knows. The European Union Parliament is raising the question about the representatives of Hungary in the parliament itself. There are lots of the violations of the EU law from the Hungary side, so the next Next week they will vote for a resolution whether Hungary should be presented in the parliament. Hungary already responded that it's because of their peaceful position that they don't want to put the sanctions on Russia and they don't want to help Ukraine with military aids. Yes, indeed, they blocked all of the resolutions of the parliament of the military support for Ukraine, but also for humanitarian support as well. All right, let's review the tactical map that we have over here. It's more or less precise, I would say. There is no movement from the Ukrainian forces or from the Russian forces for a few consecutive days. 
Yes, yesterday Ukrainians moved over here on the north part and also on the south, but not significantly. Russia still tries to perform assaults near to Klishivka. They want to stop the movement of the Ukrainian army. Still, Ukraine, however, is not able to take the very important hill over there near to Berhivka village. If we take that hill, we're gonna move to Yahedne over here, and by taking Yahedne, the Bakhmut will be half encircled from the north part. On the south part, Ukraine needs to take Klishivka. But as you can see, the most part of the Ukrainian forces are still in standby, and here they are in defense near to the Bakhmut city itself. On the south part, the most fighting is done by the 3rd Assault Brigade and they have quite limited forces, so probably all of those forces are just waiting for some sort of the big command to start the full-scale counteroffensive operation. I was wondering why the assault slowed down, but now I see that we used quite limited forces in that area. The brigades that are now in use for the counteroffensive have just a few tanks and few of the armored vehicles. The soldiers, the infantry are well trained, however, and still Russians run from their positions as we saw one week ago. But now getting more reinforcements to the area Russian managed to control the flanks, more or less. Speaking about the larger scale of the front lines, so let's say the Russian may go. They want to take Mikhailovka, Slavyansk, Kramatorsk, Durshkivka under their control. Mostly it's one big urban territory. And I may say that this task isn't real for Russians. Yes, they moved quite a bit from the Krasnogara area over here, but were stopped by Ukrainian army. And they took Bakhmut, but there is the other defense line near to the Chasif Yar, so they need to penetrate it as well. Also, they shouldn't leave Konstantinivka behind the front lines, otherwise Ukraine will manage to counterattack them. And with the current resources that Russia has, I don't see the perspective for them to move further. Yes, they continue to fight, but in a very restricted area in the Bahmut city and also Birohorivka. Birohorivka is a very unstable region, the village itself went from one hand into other many times, and it's hard to say who has more priority or advantage in that area. So we see that in general the front line is stable. Speaking about Avdiivka, the front line there is very stable, and I don't see the perspective for the Russian forces to encircle that town. Nevertheless, they have two vectors of assault, one is here near to Spartak village, and the other one near to Krasnohorivka over here, but the front line there is very stable. They move forward, but it's like into the wall, we are not letting them to proceed forward. The few words about the southern region near to Zaporizhia, so there is somewhere on the left that the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant that is controlled by the Russian Federation, and this is the possible vector for the Ukrainian counterattack. As you can see, Russia prepared lots of the defense lines, but they understand that those defense lines are unable to hold the Ukrainian army revenge. And that is why they now start to speculate about the possible sabotage on nuclear power plant. Well, we'll see how it goes, but I'm sure 99.9% .9 that the counteroffensive will start somewhere in this area. Because I know that Ukraine start to collect the forces close to the front lines from Ukrainian side, but at a certain distance to move them very quickly for attack and to be sure that Russia is unable to target our forces with their artillery systems. Also, I know that many of the Ukrainian soldiers were sent to that area for standby, so it's not the secret any longer, and Russia expects that counteroffensive. That's why they start to build the defense lines over there. But it doesn't mean that if they know the direction of the Ukrainian counterattack, that our counterattack would fail. In the modern day war, they understand the positions of our forces. They have surveillance, they have intelligence, 
but what they don't have is the spirit. Ukrainian warriors do have that spirit to liberate our land. For Ukrainians, it's like the patriotic war. And for the Russian soldiers, there is no goal. The idea of this war still wasn't explained by the Russian chiefs like Putin. As for the deep state military map, there were just minor updates for today and the front line is stable. Now my friends, please press the like to this video and also if you want to support my job, you may find some of the links just in the video description below. You may also support me on Patreon or on the sponsorship of this YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your awesome support and your help. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.